Hey guys, and welcome to the first 2-bit review of 2017. And this time I decided to take a look at a game with a very compelling story. You see, it involves aliens and a conspiracy to take control of the presidency and enact their own selfish agenda upon the country and world. You know, this actually has some crossover with, with the real world. Like, a minority of people, some of them believing in a global extraterrestrial conspiracy, help elected, well, I actually should say, with the help of an antiquated 19th century form of electoral republicanism, a president who is more qualified to write the code for this game than he is to be president of the United States. And they did it all to enact their own warped worldview upon the rest of the country and world. So, without further ado, let's jump into Hybrid Heaven. Hybrid Heaven is a hybrid of genres. It's a 3D action RPG fighter platformer. That's a mouthful. It was published and developed by Konami and released in the summer of 1999 for the Nintendo 64. Hybrid Heaven's director and designer had stated in an interview that they wanted the game to have a very cinematic feel to it, and that certain parts of the game were inspired by Hollywood movies like Blade Runner, but that no movie in particular was the inspiration for the game as a whole. He also stated that Hybrid Heaven took three years to develop, and that most of this time was spent creating the 3D engine of the game, and in particular, the unique battle system implemented in it. Now with these little tidbits out of the way, folks, let's jump into Hybrid Heaven. The gameplay is truly unique, and I have never played a game like this before or since. The 3D action and platforming site is pretty straightforward and simple. The environments are cramped for the most part, so Hybrid Heaven doesn't have any of the big platforming environments of its counterparts like Mario 64 or Tomb Raider. The enemies are fairly basic on the 3D action side of the game, and your character has a pistol that is fairly weak but can take out these enemies. But most of the enemies in the game won't be dealt with on the 3D action side of Hybrid Heaven, but on the fighter RPG side of the gameplay. Depending on who you ask, people either hate the combat system in Hybrid Heaven, or love it. I fall somewhere in the middle on this, leaning more towards loving it. It's a bit awkward at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's a fun experience. Almost all the rooms in the game are shaped like a squared arena that you would see in a 3D fighting game. The characters move like fighters as well as you can strafe left or right, step forward or backward, but unlike a fighter, you execute your moves in an action RPG style. There are an array of moves that you can perform like low mid high punches, low mid high kicks, grabbing opponents so you can throw them or slam them to the ground. You also can collect an array of items like health, stat, and stamina increases and weapons that deal out a lot of damage. There is leveling up in this game like an RPG. Now this depends on what moves you use and what parts of your body take damage. So your character levels up according to how you play the game. I think the issue a lot of people have with this setup is the game jumps around a lot. In gameplay walking around the levels it feels like a basic 3D action game and then you jump into combat and it starts to feel like a 3D fighter until you go in to do a move and then it feels like a semi turn based RPG style game. It's a weird mix and it feels like the designer had ADD when crafting the gameplay, but I fell in love with it. It's a fresh new experience, and I would give Hybrid Heaven's gameplay three bits. Man, put some clothes on, will you? Out of four. Hybrid Heaven has some of the best sound and musical production on the Nintendo 64. Aside from Resident Evil 2, it's one of the only 64 games to have fully voiced characters. But unlike Resident Evil 2, it only has voice work for certain sections of the story. Most of the game's dialogue takes place in text form. The best way I can describe the music is it's a mix between Blade Runner-esque sci-fi dystopian future and the classic eerie themes that Konami's composers are famous for. Like all the N64 cart-based games, Hybrid Heaven's sound effects and voice work are compressed. 
and this means that the sound is a bit muffled and isn't clear like its CD-based counterparts of its day. But I must say that Hybrid Heaven sound is some of the best on the N64. It gets three bits. Man, put some clothes on, will you? Out of four. Hybrid Heaven looks awesome. Like I said in my last review, Sarge's Heroes, click here. In the late years of the Nintendo 64, we were getting really great looking games, and in my opinion, Hybrid Heaven is at the pinnacle of what the N64 was capable of. It's a great looking game. Hybrid Heaven is one of the very few 64 games to feature a widescreen mode, which in that era was not the standard for video games, so it's a nice little bonus. The plot is as follows. You assume the role of Mr. Diaz, a synthetic human hybrid created by aliens. In the game's intro, he turns on his masters when he kills the synthetic human intended to replace the president's bodyguard, the very rad and tubular Johnny Slater. You find yourself in a massive underground installation created by the aliens under Manhattan. As the game progresses, it is revealed that you're actually the very rad Johnny Slater, and you were disguised as Diaz by the Gargantuans. Who are the Gargantuans? They are an alien race who, after being betrayed by a member of their species, who awoke from hypersleep and piloted a ship to Earth, they were enslaved by said traitor to help with his genetic experiments in creating clones and hybrids, a mix of human and Gargantuan DNA, resulting in extra powerful creatures. The traitor intends to conquer the Earth through the replacement of the Earth's leaders, beginning with the United States of America. A few Gargantuans have escaped the traitor and conduct an underground resistance in the shelter. They find you after you had been cloned and disguise you as Diaz, who they also captured and incapacitated. You regain your memories which were blocked while you were disguised. You then must travel even deeper into the underground shelter in hopes of stopping the hybrids from replacing the president with a clone, and by the request of the Gargantuans to defeat the traitor. Johnny's whole motive throughout this game seems to be focused solely on making it back in time to see his girlfriend under the Christmas tree on the White House lawn. Cause you know, as if aliens invading your planet with clones isn't motivation enough. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm getting laid under a Christmas tree tonight, so let's wrap up this saving the world shit real quick. You know what I'm saying? There are a variety of enemies and most seem to have been created mainly for labor or military means. They all come in different shapes and sizes, and a lot of them look like mutated animals, be it a pig or a frog. There's also agents resembling secret servicemen in black suits and sunglasses. You'll also run into random facility workers, robots, who are mostly humanoid but some are just straight up mechs, and then finally hybrids. One hybrid created to replace Kevin Young, Johnny's superior with the secret service, is Johnny's antagonist for about a quarter of the game. Other hybrid leaders you'll run into throughout the game are Dr. Gary Bross, a psychotic scientist who is obsessed with his experiments, Diaz, your true antagonist seeking revenge on you for ruining his reputation when you were disguised as him, Anna Moody, a White House staffer who was cloned to be a maternal figure for the hybrids, Jerry Silver, <laughs> what a name, the third in command in the hybrid hierarchy. He also has a almost sexual fascination with making it to the surface. It's very disturbing to say the least. Alex Hunter, the traitor's second in command and has a pretty badass sword. Now all the hybrids refer to the traitor as the master. You chase Kevin down to save the president from being cloned and having his memories stripped from him. After you save the president, the Gargantuan send you out to save the navigator who is being used by the traitor to power the shelter below the Gargantuan ship. When you approach the navigator, he asks you to take him to the ship and that he is going to fuse with you. He says that the power to the shelter will become unstable once he leaves the pedestal. Once you get back to the Gargantuan hideout, you are ambushed by Diaz and Anna. You find out that the hybrids have taken the president and Gargantuans back to the ship. 
Diaz plans to kill you to take revenge for you being his doppelganger and ruining his reputation with the other hybrids. There is a big dramatic scene of Diaz pointing a gun at you and then the shelter breaking up. Something falls from the ceiling propelling you backwards and creating a wall of flame between you and Diaz. Diaz reaffirms his intent to end your life. After making your way up to the shelter and getting to the ship, you hear someone yelling in disbelief. It's Anna. She's arguing with Jerry about the Master sacrificing them. You see, when Johnny took the Navigator, it forced the Master to advance his plan. He's sending the ship to the surface to begin his invasion, and in doing so, he is destroying the shelter below and the hybrids along with it. Anna joins Johnny, and then they make a run for it to avoid the destruction. But they are caught up in the explosion, and only Johnny survives. When you finally make your way up to the ship, Jerry greets you. After lengthy dialogue, you'll finally get to kick Jerry's hypersexual ass. When you beat him, the shelter will continue to be destroyed and a voice calls up to you. You will arrive to the ship and see Hunter guarding the captured president and gargantuans. The president yells at you to save the world and then he disappears, a floating gargantuan shows up in his place. This is the traitor that we've been hearing all about. He says that he's going to take the Navigator from you and then capture you to make an army of Johnny clones. He tells Hunter to take care of you, but once you defeat Hunter, the traitor will show up again. He blasts you with some of his psychic energy and sends you flying against the wall. The President shows up randomly and gives a running tackle to the traitor. The traitor then blasts the President and sends him flying over a ledge. The traitor will just blast you from a distance and if you get too close, he'll swipe at you to knock you back. Once the traitor is defeated, Johnny runs over to the ledge to save the president who's holding on just by one hand. The gargantuans promptly thank you and then ask you to return the navigator. When you do, he returns the power to the ship, and then the gargantuans tell you that they are leaving and to hurry to the surface before the shelter is fully destroyed. Johnny and the President head home. There's a nice shot of the pathway behind you as if something is approaching. The door opens up to reveal the traitor somehow survived. Will this guy just die? The traitor reveals himself, or I should say itself, as a parasitic life form that took over the body of our gargantuan. Gargantuan. I've been pronouncing it wrong this whole review, not gargantuan, gargantuan. It transforms into a large creature and after defeating it, like Frieza from Dragon Ball, it transforms into its true self. Once it's beaten, it'll disintegrate. The president reflects on what was just prevented as you both make your way to the elevators. Diaz, making good on his promise, shows up for a fight to the death while the shelter falls apart around you. When you defeat Diaz, the whole place starts to blow up and then the president comes back in the nick of time to save you. The president then says that it's Christmas Eve and that you should be with the woman you love. Oh my dad. I guess everyone knows how hard up Johnny is. He sends you on a vacation and then says that he'll take care of the fake president. Now, I'm rusty on my Secret Service directives, but I'm pretty sure that even if the president says, take a vacation, if you're the only one there to protect him, you can't leave. Johnny is very bad at his job as he then leaves the president and hops into a cab to go get laid. Washington, D.C. Oh, that's pretty far to go, ain't it? I'm in a hurry. This way is faster than getting on a plane. Leave it to me, man. But today's Christmas Eve, 
It ain't Halloween, you know. I guess I do need to make a stop at a clothing store along the way. I thought you were in a hurry. We interrupt this broadcast for breaking news. An astounding event has just taken place in New York City where President Weller was scheduled to address the nation tonight. The president was on the stage when he was attacked by a man, but it turned out that the assailant was, strangely enough, none other than President Weller himself? Hybrid Heaven's plot is very campy with a lot of tropes, but I still enjoyed it the same way I enjoy a C or a B movie. I take it for what it is, despite the plot holes and bad dialogue. I actually had a lot of laughs thanks to these said flaws. So, with some of the best graphics on the Nintendo 64 combined with a late night sci-fi movie plot, Hybrid Heaven gets two bits. But man, put some clothes on, will you? Out of four. Christmas. Hybrid Heaven is truly a unique game. It has a lot going into it. Some would even say too much, and I get that. But for me personally, once I got comfortable with the game mechanics, it was a really fun experience. And Hybrid Heaven stays almost solely focused on the main plot. Now, had they added in side missions and activities, I would have easily been overwhelmed as well. And while I'm on the story of the plot, Hybrid Heaven reminds me a lot of the ridiculousness and the over-campiness of the later releases of the Metal Gear Solid series, well, minus the seven-hour cutscenes. My final verdict for Hybrid Heaven is a recommended look, but not buy, for the collector and casual owner of the Nintendo 64. It's a good game but I wouldn't say it's everyone's cup of tea. Well guys, that's it for this 2-bit review. As always, I hope you stay safe and play on.